As we gear up to enter into a new decade and ring in 2020, celebrating a new year for many means making new resolutions. Whether it's needing to lose extra weight or managing their finances, even doing more exercise or eating healthier, it's good to make resolutions. However, what about when you don't follow through? Happy New Year and welcome everyone to The Main Health Show. I am Stephanie Anderson. And if you're like countless others who find themselves at the beginning of every year making New Year's resolution, reg, resolutions, however, but tend to mm, somehow during mid-year or someone just fall off, well then have I got the special guest with me here today. It is Miss Janie Terrazas. She is the mindfulness coach. And today we're gonna to talk about light up your awesomeness, empowering the mind, body, and soul. And I'll let you know that Janie's mission is to inspire and to motivate others to live a more balanced and mindful and love-filled life. So if you will, Welcome today, Janie Terrazas. Hi, Janie. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It feels so nice to be on the other end of this <laughs> because I've had you on one of my projects in the past. Yes. Rise Above. And so it's a pleasure to see you again. Yes. And to be a part of this amazing project of yours. Why, thank you. And I will let my viewership know that I have been trying to get uh, this young lady on uh, the main health show for some time. So what other time as opportunity would have it to bring in the new year for 2020 is to have, I think time is of the essence and sure. everything is about timing. So mm -hmm. I'm so glad to have you here. Yes. Um, I started the introduction and, but I want you to kind of give a little background. I know that you are the mindfulness coach. If you kind of explain a little bit about your background and how you became the mindfulness coach, Janie. Well, like many of us that venture into this field of work where you start to assist others through a journey that they're on because we're all on an individual journey mm -hmm. and a big part of growth and evolving is becoming self-aware, getting real curious about yeah. how are we showing up in the world? Uh, how are we impacting our wellness, our well-being? Because how we're being impacts your well-being. And we can get into that in a little bit. And really taking ownership of designing life intentionally and deliberately. But for me, I believe it was in about 2010 or 11, I started getting really curious about this reality and existence and asking bigger questions about like, why am I here? What is life really all okay. about? What is God? Mm -hmm. You know, just, I started getting curious in that way and started reading books and, and it really started peeling back the veil mm -hmm. on the systems of the world societal, cultural, religious, ideologies, narratives, and all the things that we need in our society to have an existence, right? Yes. Money, food, medicine, uh, you know, of course, academics, you mm -hmm. know, s schools. And I started seeing sort of the <sighs> dissonance, the ways in which the world was operating that okay. really wasn't in alignment with some universal spiritual laws, we'll okay. say. Okay. A lot of imbalances in the world. Yes. Well, when you start to discover the truth about that, I started getting really interested in this, the inner journey. Inner, yes. And really getting to the truth of not just what's going on out here, but what's really going on in here because I kept hearing this idea that we're creating our reality, your personality, and your essence is sort of attracting things to you. And that part of it got really interesting for me uh, because uh, like a lot of people, people dealt with different types of trauma. Mm -hmm. And I realized that the trauma that was living inside of me was attacking me mentally, emotionally, spiritually, mm -hmm. and those three parts of self are impacting the physical vessel, yes. the matter. 
And so if I wanted to improve my wellness and improve my energy levels and take control of that, then I was going to need to understand those sides of myself. And some mm. of that is dark and scary. Yeah. You must feel to heal. You have to reveal and, you yeah. know, and all this assess to address and all these things, right? So um, that for me, I started venturing into psychology and physics. I was studying a lot of different subject matter okay. that was helping me understand how the mind and body operate and more importantly how are they interconnected okay how it, how are my thoughts and my emotions and my feelings really impacting the body because people we've been disconnected and disembodied from the felt senses mm -hmm. uh, our body is letting us know when our mind and or heart emotional body is not at ease but see, we disregard our feelings a lot, and we're all go, 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 do, yes, do, do. We're, we're living very much cerebrally, like very mm -hmm. much in the head, and it's about thinking versus like feeling. feeling. And that's understandable, but that's not a very healthy way to live. Our society, for a very long time, has disregarded feelings and made it seem like it's not important. Exactly. And that's very destructive for all of us, men and women. And that's a whole nother conversation that's that we can get into. Conversation. And you know what, you made a good point because um, some of the resolutions that I had mentioned, mm -hmm. a lot of people are more interested in losing weight mm -hmm. or exercising, those right. things that are apparent from the outside. Yes. However, you bring up such a great point that it's all about the inside. Yes. And it manifests outwardly you it know it does because when you going back to light up your awesomeness all of this stuff uh, that we're discussing and again it you can research it yourself but yeah. i've done a lot of research on how the cells inside mm -hmm. of our body actually work yes and light is mm -hmm. coursing through our body mm -hmm. it's what's allowing your heart to beat it's what's allowing us to have an electromagnetic field, which is why they've got instruments that can read your brain waves yes. and your heart waves. When we're stressed, your brain waves and your mm -hmm. heart waves are not in coherence. They're in alignment, yes. And what that does is that speaks something to the cells. S about 68, 70% of the food for the cell is oxygen. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're stressed, when you're not living an authentic life, when most of how you're seeing and experiencing the world is in a very sort of low vibratory, negative, pessimistic state, it is impacting you on a cellular level. It's literally robbing the cell of oxygen, which robs it of light, which robs it of energy. And when you have less light yes. coursing through the body and we get to dictate how dark we are or how light we mm -hmm. are. And when I say light, I love the word light because light for me signifies a lot of things. Light is like the little light bulb that goes off in your head, intelligence, it's mm -hmm. wisdom. Wisdom and intelligence and understanding and knowledge is power. How you use it is up to you. We have the free will to decide how ignorant we want to be and or how intelligent we want to be. Yeah. So for me, I use my curiosity to study everything I can about my physiology and my own personal psychology Yes. so that I can understand why do I want what I want? Why do I do what I do? And instead of living life unconscious, that's why they say wake up. Wake up. Wake up, wake up, like get curious. Yes. Wake up to this way of being compassionately curious about yourself. Uh, going back to light, lightheartedness. There's a, when we go, when we go into the word balance, you know, there's people automatically think of balance as work and play. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But it's also about left brain and right brain. How much in the left brain are you? That's about control and rigidness and analyticalness and living very much on time. And the, the left brain likes to think about the past and the future. But the right brain yes. is the artist. The left is the yes. architect. 
-hmm. but the right brain is the child. It's yeah. the it's the feminine energy. It's the caretaker. It it's the imagination. Yeah. It's the lightheartedness. So when you're all like uh, 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 go go rigid. go yes. and rigid, not only are you robbing yourself of oxygen, which means you're robbing yourself of your wellness. You're also shrinking your perspective, and you're also robbing yourself of feeling light. When you're around people, mm -hmm. have you ever been around somebody? They just drain you. And, and they're like heavy, and they're all complaining. It's Right, and what do you say? Oh, I feel like they drain me of yes. energy, or I feel yes. so heavy when I'm around them. I'm you reminded. Know? I'm reminded of scripture. Not to cut you off. No, but please, please. Light and darkness cannot exist together. Mm. And just think about it. If you walk into a, a dark room and you turn the switch on the light, mm -hmm. you're no longer in the dark. You're in the light. Mm -hmm. yes. So in biblical, of course, it's talking about good I and evil, it. bad, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. okay, but. I believe it when you say, because that happens. Yes. When I've had an experience where I'm, I'm happy, I'm energetic, and if I allow someone's mood or their disposition to affect my light, yes. I feel drained, right. you know? So it, you made a good point about the light and how, how it can affect you. Yes, and, and also too, uh, you know, you were saying the light and the dark, like we can't have this, there's the sun and the moon, we have the night and the day. <laughs> and so there's all this like uh, metaphors in yes. life and like yes. that we can relate to our own selves. And it's very natural as human beings, we are here to experience a wide variety yes. of emotions. And it just so happens that each of them carry a frequency and a vibration. It's okay that you're gonna get angry, some things yes. are gonna, but we get curious about who and what is always making you angry. Mm -hmm. um, some things like when we see injustice taking place, yes. anger can that anger can be used to to motivate you to do something to help. It can be a positive right. experience and not negative negatively. Right. Yes. And sadness and crying and you know there's all these different feelings that we feel. Our goal is to try our best to feel the others as much as possible, but to leave room and understanding yes. and mercy yes. for the others and learn how to process those emotions effectively. Yes. Uh, because when we ignore them and we pretend like we're good and we're good and I'm fine and you have to keep this face and all's well yes. and you know, what is everybody else gonna think and I have to have it all together and that's exhausting. Yes. It's very exhausting so you just have to find um, a way for you to restore yourself. If you're around a lot of heavy people that are negative all the time, mm -hmm. and then you're watching television and it's all these murder shows and you're watching the news and then you're listening to this music that's like real degrading. And yes, all it of can't that help is, but affect you. Yeah, it's not just about what you eat. You were talking about the physical vessel. Yes. What you eat and what you drink is absolutely going to impact your body. If you eat food like a lot of vegetables and fruits yeah. and food that has life, mm -hmm. not preservative box food that's fake, mm -hmm. that's artificial food, yes. that yeah, sure it's filling up your belly, but is it what is it really feeding your blood with, yes. right? So I'm not saying you have to be straight and narrow and never, because I mean, I love me some sweets. I <laughs> like sugar, <Yeah. laughs> you know? And so I make sure that I get plenty of the other stuff so that I can enjoy that and try to do it yes. without guilt. Funny enough, guys, if you are looking to, you were talking about losing weight, and I'm gonna plug really quick Justin, the change artist. He's my partner. We do okay. a lot of work together. Yes. And you know, he helps people with weight loss, yes. right? But what he calls it is weight release. Okay. Because and and I'll tie it into the mind and body and stress. When you're wanting to lose weight, there's some things that are tied to your eating habits mm -hmm. that go. I know in, emotional eaters. I know some emotional eaters. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um even for some people, uh, something like sex trauma. Yes. Sex trauma can cause a person to then want to protect themselves and yes. have this idea that if I have a lot of weight, then it'll be a barrier to yes. predators and then I'll be less of a prey yes. because they're gonna want the other prettier, thinner yes. girls or whatever, do you yes. see what I mean? So you have to understand where's your motivation to lose weight and since we Words are very powerful. Yes, they are. So when you hear, oh, I have to lose weight, the mind is already registering with the word lose. Well, when you think of lose, lose is loss. Loss is scarcity, scarcity and abundance. What are you doing? No, you want to improve your wellness. Yes. You want more vitality. What do you, don't think about what you don't want to look like and feel like anymore. Flip the script. Yes. This is part of mindfulness. Becoming very like a skilled observer, a Jedi of your words, your thoughts, and your actions.
okay? Becoming accountable. Lighting up your awesomeness is being able and willing to have enough humility yes. and vulnerability in order for you to have authenticity. You need those two things. And a yes. lot of people do not want to look at those other sides of themselves because they want the quick fix. But we must discover how are we unconsciously, subconsciously self-sabotaging ourselves. And when you got shine a light, going back to light, light. Uh -huh. we are here to be, God light. is light, yes, this, right? Is. Yes. And nothing would exist without the, the, the light, nothing. We need the, the sun. On the first day he said what? Let there be light. Exactly. And funny enough, yes. not to go too much into it because I love talking about, you know, yes. God and creation <laughs> yes. and creator. But he said, so there's sound and light. Yes. We are instruments that light and sound is coursing through. Now, when you're not singing and dancing to the beat of your own drum because you've been conditioned to believe that you're supposed to want and be something that you're not, which is the, the, the whole point of existence, is to get to who am I and then return inward and get back to the person that you're, you're here to really be. Because yes. once you tap into that individual without any fear of what everybody else is thinking, then you can live life from a place that's gonna allow you to, to be and do the thing that God had intended for you to do and be. And more will come to you, more abundance will come to you yes. because you're doing it from a place of joy. You're, you're, you're more free. I think that what you're specifically talking about, you touched on it earlier mm -hmm. and I would love for you to expound on it, uh -huh. is a lot of people, you see them looking a certain kind of way, they dress a certain kind of way, yes. they live in a certain kind of zip code, mm -hmm. but they're not really their authentic self. That inauthenticity yes. is really starting to wear on people. Yes. You know, so it could, it could be their health. You know, right. different things happen and manifest in them because they're not living their authentic self. Right. Can you kind of touch on, elaborate on that a little yes. bit more? So authentic self also has to do with integrity of your voice. Mm -hmm. One, we all have a voice. How we're using it, though, is what yes. we need to like look at, right? <laughs> um, yes, true. <laughs> and so... Um, Voice, wait, I, I just lost my train of thought. You were just saying authenticity. Yes. Oh, integrity. Yes. Okay, integrity, integrity. Part of loving thyself and self-care mm -hmm. is creating healthy boundaries, okay? Yes. Living your truth means being honest with yourself and other people. That is not easy for some because we have sicknesses like people-pleasing syndrome. Yes people-pleasing tendencies, the martyr syndrome, where we love to give and help and do, but we feel real guilty if anybody wants to do for us, yes. or we feel guilty saying no. And what I like to tell people, <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. It could be y'all. You might have a lot going on. Maybe something's going on with your child that you're dealing with. You're not having, a, uh, you and your husband are struggling with some things. Work is demanding more mm -hmm. of you. And then your sister calls you to be like, oh, Bobby has his like uh, birthday party coming up and I would love for you to help me with the party favors. Yes. Could you get here early? Right away, okay we don't, no. don't want to disappoint. Yes. And it's very, it's very noble and it's very beautiful that yes. we want to make everybody happy, but at the expense of yourself, True. now you're creating pain and suffering. Now you're doing that very thing out of obligation and guilt. Yes. And so now that's coursing through you and that in oh. itself is creating sickness yes. inside of you already. Yes. And then if you do that enough times, you're not really being honest with your sister and you'll start to build resentment for her, especially if she's the type yes. of sister that doesn't reciprocate yes. that same kind of help and support. Yes. And then you have to save yourself. You know, the first thing they tell you when we listen to, we're on an airplane. Okay. <laughs> the first thing they tell you is what? When the oxygen mask drops, administer it to yourself first and then help the person. So the same kind of thing, you have to make sure you're whole first before you can begin to help anybody else. Okay, so people make resolutions and their intentions are good. And I've been asked, Stephanie, what are your re uh, resolutions for 2020? You know right. what I'm saying? Hmm. I'm not making resolutions these, yeah. in, this year. Yeah. What I do, I have identified some things I want to work on mm -hmm. myself and I'm going to be deliberate. <sighs> that in itself is a yes. resolution. Yes. It's a mantra yes. that you wake up daily and yes. you say, I am 
living deliberately. Yes. You know, intentionally, authentically. Yes. Uh, compassionately, yes. you know, these things that are going to help us bring more light into the body, yes. into the relationships, yes. and into the world, and yes. into your work, and all that, that you do. Yes. Uh, your uh, weight release, talking about the physical vessel, when you feel that good inside, mm. it's going to naturally radiate on the, on outside. the outside. Yes, yes. and so um, uh, resolutions. Okay, so... <laughs> You said you had something for me on resolutions. Well, I have, I have something with the word because I love word play. Okay. And uh, the way God speaks to me oftentimes, I love how information is shared with me because it comes in acronyms sometimes, okay. right? So uh, one day I was, I heard S-O-U-L, right? The word soul sort of came to, came to me. Okay. And then I heard the soul always seeks out unconditional love, and that mm. in itself is the acronym S O U L. -L. Seeks out unconditional love. Wow. So what I I've been mastering for the last several years uh, religiously is learning what does unconditional love actually mean. So when you say resolution, I see resolution. Wow. We need to seek solutions for the things that are ailing us or keeping us stuck or making us feel limited and making us feel helpless and making us continue to think under a mentality that is a systematic paradigm that is got, it's like a virus that got mm. all of, in our heads that uh, there's a that there's only one way of being and that you cannot it, it's a victim mentality yes it's a victim mentality so that's not something that you can just flip and switch overnight mm -hmm. but it's there's little things that you can do daily to feed the mind, the body, yes. the heart, and the soul. And that's yes. different things. And we could talk a little bit about the seven positive daily habits that will help yes. people. Please. But but resolution, the most important gift that you could give yourself really is the gift of knowing thyself, healing thyself so that you can illuminate thyself. Yes. It's giving yourself the gift of life because just because you're breathing and you're awake and you're going about your day, how much of self feels alive? Yes. What excites you? What motivates you? Where's your joy coming from? You, under, you, you know yes, what I mean? Yes. And get curious about those things. If anything, let the mantra be for your resolution. Is I love that. Get be like return to the curiosity of a child. The innocence. The when, innocence of the yes, child. And yes. we beat ourselves up so much and we feel so and crappy about ourselves and we have two voices the dark voice and the light voice it's we got a Darth Vader inside of us y'all <laughs> and that's our self-critic you know the yes. self-saboteur this the doubter yes um, and then we have the other side and what we need to do is the world has conditioned the other voice to be louder and stronger yes it's up to us to feed the other so that you can start bringing that balance. It's, it's really taming. If you want to manage your stress and tame your stress, we need to discover what are your dragons. Yes. And right now they might be really big and they're taking over. So I'm here as a mindfulness coach, which by the way, mindfulness means to pay attention on purpose in the now, non-judgmentally. Wow. Pay attention to what? Pay attention to your surroundings, what's going on in here and here. Notice the next time somebody pisses you off when you're on the road for road rage because everybody can relate to that. Okay. I know I can. <laughs> okay, you can totally relate to that. Um, notice instead of using your energy to cuss them out and create the whole story and everything, be like, oh, and then think of what you wanna say, feel where it's attacking your body. Yeah. Notice your nervous system. The breath, and which will- know you have power to change that. We're going to yes. we're going to hold that because that okay. could go on a whole nother. We got a, uh, about a minute left. Okay. And we're going to probably come back, take a quick uh, break, yeah. and we're going to just touch on yes. the seven positive daily habits. And you actually have a gift for the viewers yeah. to yeah. be able to get that. Yeah. And actually, I'm going to have Justin to come up and we'll kind of talk about uh, that. Oh, he want to? Okay. If, you know, just He's to, here. He can maybe go through the exercise with us. With us? So, um... <gasps> We'll be back in a moment. This is Stephanie Anderson with The Main Health Show. And welcome back to Main Health Show. Again, I am here with Jamie Terrazas, the mindfulness coach, and her partner, 
Justin, the change artist. Thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm. And in our previous segment, we, we talked a lot about mindfulness and how to be a better you this year, but we're gonna talk a few points on the seven positive daily habits uh, that you can do. And she's gonna go over a few of those with us, and yes. she has a gift for each one of you on how to actually access that. So Janie, go over some of that information with us, please. Okay, sure. So I won't go over all of them, but I'll touch on three. And a lot of these, I sandwich them, um, meaning I do them simultaneously, and you can do all of them in less than 10 minutes, pretty much. But we'll do uh, move your body. Move your body for at least five minutes a day. Okay, um, and that doesn't matter if it's stretching or just going for a walk or just jumping jacks or whatever, just just move your body. Mm -hmm. um, breathe and be still for at least two minutes a day. And I believe we're gonna do a little breathing exercise here in just a moment, um, but that's to help oxygenate your blood. So you do it with intention and we'll do some cool visualizations and mm -hmm. things with that. Um, and then, um, Connect with nature. So I go outside, grounding, and you can do this your, uh, research yourself, earthing and grounding. When your bare feet are on dirt, sand, grass, water, when we're in nature, electrons are emanating off of the earth and they're being absorbed into the bloodstream and it's uh, fighting off free radicals. So it's like antioxidants. That's why they say nature nurtures. And that's why we feel so relaxed. But the point is to disconnect from technology. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and so that, that's the whole point of bringing balance is, yes, we're on TV time, iPads, but how often do you go outside and really take in the fresh the air, nature. really yes. feel the sun, and just be present and allow yourself to, to again, be in the now. Well, so well, I'm really can... excited for us to go through a demonstration yes. with the breathe and be still. So if we can do a few seconds of that. Yeah. And it's, it's not like just regular breathing right. that we're unconscious of, but a very deliberate. So kind of show us how to do that. Yeah, so uh, this is a great way to bring your attention and focus into something that just naturally occurs all the time. Okay. And so uh, if you want, if you're comfortable, you could sit down, lay down, or stand. In our case, we're standing. And just close your eyes if you're comfortable closing your eyes. And I want you to just relax the body, just notice your body where it might be holding some tension and just kind of wiggle that out. And uh, as you sit here and take this breath, you're gonna notice just the natural rise and fall. Now I want you to intentionally take in a clean, deep breath through the nose and imagine that it's shooting into the brain and coming down the nervous system. Taking in another breath, and I like to use the breath to also imagine that you're cleansing all the systems of the body and breathing life into all the organs that might be holding on to any stress or tension and pressure. And giving your body permission to release that on the exhale. Wow. Yes, I, I could see how that should be incorporated. We don't have much time, that's so it. That's, that, thank that's you. The enough. viewers can actually take what you share with them today and incorporate that. Mm -hmm. I know there's going to be someone here, Janie, who's going to want to know more about what you do. Mm -hmm. If you can give us uh, information about your website or sure. social media so they can do that. Yes, absolutely. So uh, go to janieterrazas.com. Uh, you'll see all kinds of places where you can contact me and request the seven positive daily habits. I will send you a PDF that you can print out or just go over and, uh, and start to incorporate some of these things just to kind of get your mind, your body, your heart, and your soul uh, centered into wholeness and wellness. We, uh, Justin and I, teach a lot of different classes. Uh, that's for movement, meditation, again, that self-care prescription that you're looking for. If you're looking for relationship coaching, uh, that's another thing that we also okay. offer and uh, a wide variety of services that have everything to do with the mind body and being mindful and, and again living that light life light life right <laughs> um, and uh, I want to thank you so much yeah. yeah for social media just search at Janie the mindfulness coach yeah. and that's uh, one L people like to put two L's in full yeah it's one L yeah. Uh, and yeah and I'm sure that you will probably have something there Definitely. too that they can like click Definitely. to and, and I look forward to, to really having those that are seeking to live a more balanced mindful love filled yeah. life 
reach out to us. So thank you. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me here yes. on the Main Health Show. Thank you. And thank you for watching and viewing as well. This is Stephanie Anderson. Take care and be blessed. And Happy New Year.